Eureka, director S.S. Rajamouli's Bahubali, The Beginning, is a mythological masterpiece of Telugu movie gold currently streaming on Netflix. This is primal storytelling at its best. Imagine the movies Ben-Hur, Troy, and 300 all fused together with India's grand history and mythical tales. Now throw in family fate in an epic battle of good versus evil where honor is forged into flesh. Bahubali isn't just one of the greatest movies ever. It is a mantra all men should sing. Welcome, my friends. I hope the week has been treating you great. Bahubali takes you on a guided tour of director S.S. Rajamouli's palatial soul and pure imagination. It is perfectly executing a mythological story with operatic emotions, motherly resolve, virility, revenge, conquest, men being men and women being bold, brilliant, and beautiful. It will catapult you into cinematic splendor of explosive sound and action that I guarantee will have you feeling like you've been dropped off the edge of a cliff and you're hanging there begging for more. Now, if you happen to be one of the few people who has yet to join, I invite you to take a moment, push the subscribe button down below, and join the conversation as we continue to have fun exploring the mother load of Indian movie magic. Did you know that S.S. Rajamouli took more than 600 days to shoot the film he wove together from legends, which will be passed down from father? to son. He was inspired from such great tales as the Amma Katha comics, the Ramayana, and the world's greatest epic and longest poem, the Mahabharata. Now, the story is a classic. A baby is born to a royal family, and by a quirk of fate, he ends up being raised by a tribal couple in the forest. But from the very beginning, from the very first beat of the movie, you have Rajmata Shivgami, played by Ramya Krishna, who's on the run protecting the child Shivudu from the king's guard and what's reminiscent of Lord Krishna's story. The queen, single-handedly with one arm, holds this baby, this child above swollen, raging waters to save him as she sacrifices herself and drowns. From the very moment the screen lights up, it will light a thousand fuses and they will each detonate with military precision exactly the moment when Raja Muli wants you to laugh, smile, cheer, roar, or cry. It's mesmerizing. And Shivudu is played by international superstar Prabhas. We see him grow into a man with the legendary strength of Hercules and the agility of Tarzan. His hero's journey begins. And from the very start of his childhood, he had this urge, this inner calling to climb this steep, slippery mountain pummeled on all sides by a ferocious waterfall. Eventually, as a man, he makes it. He gets to the top of the summit, and instantly he's drawn into this vision of beauty and brains, the warrior princess Avanatika. She's played by Tamana Bhatia. He discovers his real lineage and his destiny, which is to rescue the princess Devasina, played by Anushka Shetty, from the evil and vile king of the Maheshmati Empire, Baladeva, played by Rana Dugubati. At the halfway point of the movie, it starts into a flashback mode. It takes you half a century ago where what you see is the civil war and dynastic conflict which led to Baladeva becoming king of Mashmati. Gradually, we learn Shivudu's real identity, and that's where the next level of action takes place. This grand climactic 45 minute battle, which I have not seen done since Peter Jackson's Siege of Helm's Deep. Raja Muli does not waste one single second of screen time. I never felt like I wanted to skip ahead. This film is filled with such exotic locations, they're like characters into themselves. You have these already extraordinary shots with unparalleled action. Whether it's a man fighting a titanic bull or the erection of a golden giant statue, Rajamuli again puts his foot off the gas and never lets go. And on top of that, we get the pulse pounding beats, the music of M.M. Kiravanis. He renders a score of love into rhythmic sight, and family betrayal is cauterized into colored sound. 
The movie is a rich, ravishing feast of beauty. It's mesmerizing. Bahubali distinguishes itself from Hollywood films in too many ways to count. But one of the primary is the way it treats its characters. Yeah, we have some people with these almost godlike abilities, but the characters are developed into people that you can relate to, and the world feels lived in and real. Hey, why are you running? Do you want to take me? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You have Raja Mooli. He gives you all of this background on the people. It connects it to the audience in such a way that when you're done with the film, you feel like you just saw your friends on the screen or your enemies. It's amazing. He builds each character by basing their actions on their past experiences. When was the last time you saw that done? You know, I've been falling in love with Indian cinema and with the culture, with the people. And I've been doing this research, diving deep into the rabbit hole. And what I discovered was that Maishmati Kingdom is what's considered to be current day Ujjain. It's also said by some historians that Maishmati Kingdom was one of the 16 great republics of ancient India. The movie is filled with this wonderful imagery and symbolism and references to Jainism and Hinduism. Bahubali has it all, both real and fiction. And the camera, the cinematography, they love and worship Prabhas. You see these slow motion, close-up shots where they look at Prabhas and they give us his grand magnetic presence, which transcends language and culture. I mean, he's not only this indestructible leader of men who can lift a two-ton Shiva Lingam stone. No, he imbues Bahubali with this vulnerable innocence and the spirit of an adventure. And Balal Deva, well, that actor defines evil. He plays it perfectly. He is a king who has no faith, who does not believe in God, except that he demands to be worshipped as a deity by his people. You know, Raja Muli's vision has no limits. He strikes the perfect balance between poetry and physicality, between legendary love and epic masculine heroism. But he didn't stop there. He added an extra gem, an extra jewel to his five-star recipe of giving us these strong, honorable men. He gave us these virile, beautiful, wonderful, brilliant women while they maintain their femininity or motherly tenderness, never once sacrificing their feminine beauty or intelligence on the altar of political correctness. They don't lecture us about the latest political rant. They just are epic. You know, epic. That's a word that's thrown around a lot today by Hollywood on so many undeserved films. But Bahubali is an epic that has earned its title. But the true hero of the story is director S.S. Rajamouli. He has this glorious vision which is brought to life by the awe-inspiring legacy of India. You know what he did? He gave everyone a masterclass education on how to fill the screen with an ink of the soul and achieve the impossible. And there you have it. So go out there, enjoy, watch it and share with everyone you know. And remember that we never bow down, we never bend the knee firmly, defy and step up, stand tall and get busy living your best life now, always forward. So I was 22 and I was with my grandfather at the gun range. And in between each volley that he was shooting at the target, he would turn and he would feel, he's like, I cannot stand cowards, weakness. And I'm like, what's wrong, Bubba? He's like, don't worry about it. And then he'd fire again. Well, when it came to my turn, I was reloading the magazine and I was asking him, what's going on before I fire? He goes, nothing. He goes, I'd rather face 10 men who are enemies 
who have teeth like a lion and want to rip you apart, and they're geniuses, then they have one cowardly weak friend. They're the worst they can be. And I said, what is it? And he's like, don't worry about it. And he started pouring his knowledge, his wisdom, and his experience to me every time, every time in between the shots. And he shared. He's like, you know, the problem with cowards, the problem with weakness is that those individuals imitate life. They pretend to be living. They never really love. They never really work. They never really are themselves. And I, I turned to him and I said, what do you mean they don't love? Love is a feeling. You have it inside. You love a woman. You eventually, if she loves you back, you get married. He goes, not really. He goes, to love takes strength. It takes will. It takes want. It takes work. You don't just say it. You have to express it. And you express that with action. He goes, if you get married, you have to step up. You have to be able to provide. You have to be able to sacrifice. You have to be able to put yourself aside. All of that is strength. Cowards don't do that. They huddle it deep inside their turtle shell, trying to make the smallest target possible. So anything dangerous or any life experience will just pass them by. And he goes, what's worse about them is that weak men, cowardly men, will allow the dumb and the street smart and the cunning who break the rules to get away with their lies. They will try to transform, worst of all, other people to be as weak as them. That way they can hide in the herd and maybe one day slowly pop their head up and act like they're the leader. He goes, weak men like that can't lead. They're too afraid. They don't take action because they're afraid of mistakes. They're afraid to be humiliated. They're afraid to be ashamed. I go, in that natural? He goes, it is, but you overcome that. He goes, the difference between the coward and the hero, he goes, we all know this, is both men fear, but it's one. One of those still moves forward in action. So I asked him, I said, well, can those weak men can they ever grow to be strong? Said, That's a good question, but let me tell you something. He goes, they can. And I go, how? He goes, well, let's say there's something you fear, multiple things you fear. He goes, try it one day a week, one day a month. You decide, start doing things that you're afraid of. Start doing things that you're not comfortable with. Slowly, 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 you'll feel bolder, you'll feel stronger. And he goes, if that doesn't work, or you can do it at the same time, he goes, try to imitate somebody who you view as strong, who have those characteristics that you wish to embody, that gives you that will, that discipline, that grit in order to face tough challenges. Maybe that's an actor in a movie, a particular character you like, imitate them. And you do it until you have strength. He goes, you know how it says, act as if you have faith until you have faith. Okay. And he goes, it's the only way to live. He goes, you want to face the challenges in life head on with your eyes open, your heart ready, and your mind always thinking, but your guts tied down and you're ready to go. I'm like, all right. He goes, there's no other way to live. Living in fear creates more disasters than you can imagine. He goes, more people have suffered at the hands of weak men. He goes, look at the greatest villains in history. He goes, you know what's wrong with them? They eventually realized that they were true cowards inside, truly weak. And so because of that, they hated themselves. And in hating themselves, they wanted to prove to the world because they knew everyone else knew it, that they were really strong. But they didn't acquire strength. They just acquired the tools of terror. So thinking of watching Bahubali when I saw it, think of how Shivudu, he had such great strength and great honor. It resonated like a Nora where people wanted to follow him. It didn't matter if he made a mistake or he made the right choice or the wrong choice, because you learn from him, you grow. He wasn't afraid to move forward. And my Bapu said, that's the way you live, fearless. Not unafraid like a dummy. You keep your eyes open, but you move forward being you. And he goes, being yourself, that takes the greatest strength of all.